Hello again and welcome to the MPI tutorials. In, in previous videos, I showed you how to install um, uh, Ubuntu, the uh, three versions. Number one is the Ubuntu master running here, and that's the screen. And this is 13.10, um, uh, it's the full CD with the uh, GUI. And there are also three slaves, which are um, uh, slave A, slave B, and slave C. Um, and they are the mini.iso, also Ubuntu 13.10. So previous videos I showed you how to uh, install Ubuntu on the VirtualBox uh, virtual machine. I've taught you how to set up the uh, uh, communication so with SSH, allowing the master and slave to talk to another. I've also taught you how to uh, set up SSH uh, key uh, without the password so that the master can send things to the slave without having to log in every time. Um, in the last tutorial, I showed you how to install the NF NFS shared folder, and it's all been set up now. So um, from here onwards, I will be installing MPI, um, and with a particular version of MPI called the MPI CH2, and so. Um, the, the first thing, the first thing really is to uh, check again to see if we could talk to the slaves. Okay, so that's one, two. Okay, it's pinging here. Okay, that's great. And what about SSH? Okay, so it's logging in without the password. Okay, and I'm going to just clear the screen. And earlier we we um, created a folder at the root called Mirror. Okay, and Mirror is with the NFS setup, so the slave machines can now talk to the mirror, uh, see every file that has been created in in the Mirror. So in the Mirror, we've got the tests, and that's created in master. And the slave also, we have the test. So everything that's created in the mirror, in the master's folder, root folder, is created also. It's linked up with the slave. Okay. Now, um, to install MPI, we would like to use the wget. Okay, we're going to connect to the MPI uh, CH website. Just in case, static downloads okay, 3.0.4. That's the version MPICH 3.0.4.tar.gz. Okay, and that will download the file. If you use the browser, you can also download it from there. But I'm just downloading straight into the mirror folder. Okay, put in, put in password and it's connecting to the server, and now it's resolving. The server, so it's connected and it is downloading. Right, immediately after the download, we will extract the file and we will do some configuration before we install it and set up the path. So we're just gonna wait, it's gonna end soon. It's 80%, now it's 90%, and it will soon be done. Okay, so right now we've got a folder. Okay, we're gonna cd change directory into the folder mpich. Hmm. Oh, sorry, that is not a folder. It's a file. I'm sorry. So I told you we need to extract that. Okay, and that's much better. Pressing tab works. So we're going to extract that. Okay, it's showing a lot of permission denied. Well, the reason is that we didn't put a, a, a super user. Now it's doing it properly. So we've got the folder, we've got the zip file, we can do the zip file if we want to. I'm keeping it there. So next step is to MP, uh, change directory with mpich uh, folder. Okay, we've got all the files there. Um, 
So the next step, the next step is to configure okay, with a prefix okay, into the mirror folder at the root two. Okay. Um, what did I do? Okay. Well, we're gonna con we're gonna continue. We're gonna continue and see. Hmm. Right. The reason um, is that we need to. Um, did we do that? Do we need to install the build essential? Okay, because the G plus plus all the build essential files are in that package. Install that first, and I'm going to do that again. Okay, do that again. Okay. Right, so you said we don't have a Fortran 7.7 compiler, but it doesn't matter because I'm not using the Fortran uh, compiler, I'm using C++. So we didn't really need the Fortran, so we have to disable it. And so let's, let's type that again. Okay, we can do a sudo configure, okay, with a prefix at my root folder ch2 okay and then we're going to do a, a, a disable f77 disable fortran compiler okay i think that's that's right so let's press enter and we'll let it run Okay, this will take some time as it configures and checks the foundational packages. Okay, if you get a configuration completed, then you are ready. So let's do a sudo make.
it is taking a long long time now you do know that you can actually go check your email Facebook and whatever <laughs> watch a video but get back to this video and subscribe comment and like I'm guessing that it should end soon looking at the folder Can you look at all the library files? Well, I'm going to go to one of the slate machines, to an LS, as you can see. Whatever that has been created in the master folder is mirrored in the slave folder. Okay. So if you create a file, um, say a, a dot, dot .cpp file, dot .c file, it will also be in the slave machine. Okay, and th that's how it runs. So when you run MPI in the master's machine and you're calling the rank of the MPI function okay, um, to run on node 1, 2, and 3 that's A, B, and C it will also run the same script okay. So it is ended now. Right, the next step is to do a sudo make install. Alright, looks okay. Okay. Okay, and that's done. So um, from this point onward, all you want to do is to add path. Okay, so I'm going to just export path um, and that will be in my using the mpich-bin folder and add it actually to the previous path so that it adds it to the front of the, the, the string path uh, uh, environment variable. Okay, the next thing is to also export the LD library path okay and that goes into the same folder mirror and the ICH2 lib ld path string okay I'm just making sure that everything's correct okay make sure there's no spelling mistake okay that should be fine So after setting, exporting, and setting the two, uh, the LD, LD library path and the path to the uh, library and the bin folder, you'd also want to add uh, the mirror MPICH2 slash bin to the export folder. So what you do is to open sudo pico etc environment. Okay, and right here, you want to add mirror. Okay, um, MPI CH2 bin. 
followed by a colon. Okay, and that's right. Press Drag, yes, save it. And that is the completion of the uh, the installation okay, for the MPI. So the next step, you'd want to test um, uh, MPI, uh, some MPI programs and monitor the slave servers, okay, uh, the slave machine, sorry, um, to see activities. And one way of doing that, I've installed HTOP. Okay, that gives you an indication of the processes um, and the processes running here. So if you'd run a Hello World MPI program, you probably wouldn't notice that it will be, you know, you probably wouldn't see it running here. If you run something like a Pi calculation, which I will do in another video, you start to notice that in the HTOP in this uh, screen and also the HTOP okay, across the other the, the slave machines, they will all be showing the processes that's running. Now how do you install HTOP? It's really simple, Control C now, sudo add, add install HTOP. Okay? Because I've already installed that, so it's not installing. Okay, so HTOP allows you to monitor the processes. When you run an MPI program, essentially you'd be doing this. Okay, so after comp compilation, you've got a file. Let's say it's named Hello World, and usually you do this. You know, inputting a file called hosts with the number of processes, which is here for. Now, the host file has to be created, and the host file contains all the IP addresses, including the master and the slave. So let's set it up. Okay, inside the mirror folder. And I'm going to put in the, the master. Okay, I'm going to just cut, paste, 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 paste. Um, two, three. Okay, so these are the hosts within the computer. So if you set up a system with more than three slaves, okay, let's say you have, you have sixteen slaves, you put in all the IP addresses. In. Okay, so when you send a message, uh, MBI will know which processes in which you know, IP address to run to send the file and send instructions to. Contracts, get price y, save it. Okay, so you've got the host file here. Okay, and at least all the IP addresses. So this concludes the, the installation, configuration, and setup of MPI CH2. And in the next video, I'll show you how to um, code the, the Hello World as well as test that all the processes are running correctly and talking to one another. Okay, um, I hope you like this video and you've learned something from it. So um, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye.